Welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory, and on this episode, we are going to start our Mega Factory 2.0. Now that we've completed our space elevator phase four, that's all done. All of our starter factory is completed. It's time to move on to our end game phase of the of Satisfactory. So sit back, relax, and let's jump into it. All right, here we are. It is Mega Factory 2.0 time. And what is that going to mean going forward in our Satisfactory Update 7 journey? Well, that is going to mean we're going to have some ultimate goals that we need to achieve in this whole process. And what are these goals going to be? We're going to have 2100 uranium nuclear power plants. So, I went and did some searching through Satisfactory Calculator, discovered that there is three nodes of normal uranium and one node of um, unpure, or uh, yeah, the unpure ur uranium. And so if we put Mark III miners on those and overclock them to 250%, that will get us 2100 uranium. And we're going to turn that into a massive nuclear power plant that's going to generate nearly 500 gigawatts of power once it's up and running. Also with that, that's going to generate 1700 uranium waste that we need to recycle and get out of our system so that we don't have a massive pileup of uranium waste. So all that needs to get breaking down into plutonium pellets, later down to plutonium fuel rods that we can then dump into the awesome sink. The other side piece to this that we're going to be doing for our end game is we're dividing all of our factories that we have right now, plus whatever supporting factories are needed to be able to build and maintain a functional nuclear power plant. We're going to divide these up into individual factories throughout the entire map rather than one big massive starter factory like we've got now. So we've got some, some things that are going to be changing in, we'll, we'll tear down bits of the old factory or starter factory and bring them new life in an actual my goal is to make a cosmetic looking build something that's not just a bunch of conveyors and machinery but put them into some buildings and try to make something um, of our 2.0 upgrade so that is our goals for mega factory 2.0 now, there's some prerequisites. What do we need to do first before we can do that? This is what needs to be done first. We need more power. I know that we're going to be building a massive power generator that's going to generate 500 gigawatts, but we need power to get power. It's like that old adage of it costs money to make money. Well, it costs power to make power. So we're going to go around and we're going to be slapping some geothermal generators out today on all of the geysers that are available out there. We'll load up the map and have a look at what geyser locations are and how many of these thermal generators we can get spread out throughout the map, as well as we're gonna build power storage. We wanna make sure that we've got enough storage for uh, a bunch of excess power that if we do end up taking a power plant offline for a short period of time as we're moving things or upgrading things, then we have power storage that's going to keep our factory up and running. And we're going to kind of build a little bit of a ridiculous amount of power storage. I, I'm thinking something under the map. Um, I'm not sure how far under the map we can go. I've never tried it, but that's what we're going to dive into in this episode. So, all right, now that we've got a plan, let's dive into it. All right, what does it take for building a thermal generator? Let's have a look and make sure that we've got all the materials we need. We'll go over to power section here, thermal generator. It's looking like it needs supercomputers. It looks like it's heavy modular frames, uh, high-speed connectors, as well as a bunch of copper piping or copper sheeting uh, and some rubber of which all of those we have in inventory. So now we need to be looking at the map. And of course, it's not gonna show up on here right now. Like we could go and I think we can, can we scan? Scan for, yes, we can scan for geysers, but I think what I might do uh, just to make things a little bit easier is I might load up the, um, 
the map from Satisfactory Calculator and just highlight the, the geysers out there and we'll go and find each one of those locations. So let's load up that map right here. All right, so as you can see on this map, I've got displaying up on the screen right now, we have a pretty good band of uh, various geysers that are available kind of through the center of the map. And then it looks like there's a couple of them at the south end of the map as well. Uh, it does look like we've got about six of them are pure. There's a number of normal and a couple of uh, unpure nodes that we could get uh, some additional power from. So each one of these geyser nodes, we're going to go throw uh, one of these geothermal generators on. So let's head over to the first one and kind of get started. We'll work our way from the west side of the map over to the east and then finish up on the south end of the map for these. And actually, we might even just start with the ones that are kind of close to our base. So we'll take that screen off and we'll look at this map. Uh, there is actually some that are like right close right around here. So we'll actually start with these ones and then we'll make our way through this band and finish up with the ones that are down here in the south. Okay, by right beside it is literally like right underneath us here. Oh, in fact, it is right here. Well, isn't that convenient? Like we are like right underneath our factory. We've had a geyser sitting here the entire time. However, we do need to get rid of a few of these little uh, blind pests that are around here. Now, I uh, I am in like peaceful mode. I've got the game with Update 7. They do have new game modes, um, which is peaceful mode. We still take damage from them if they hit us, but they won't actively attack us. And it's mainly because I got sick and tired of having to deal with the monsters. So they're in peaceful mode while we're out here building. We're going to take some damage because some of them I'm going to run into. Oh, I guess I should finish destroying them so that they stop spawning. I think that's it. I think we're good. Of which we can go and gather up the bits for those. Where are the carcasses? There's one there. There is one there. There should be another one right there. Perfect. Okay. Let us go, and we're going to slap down our first geyser on this. And these, from what I understand, are not overclockable. So you can't really do anything with these other than get some power. And this one here is generating about 500 megawatts. They do fluctuate between two and 600. Um, but I think it averages, it, the average ends up being about here. So basically, it hits max, it goes back down, it comes back up. But I think its overall average will be about 500. And then, of course, we do need to tie it in line with our power. So um, we may just be grabbing some lines here to see how far we can reach it and then just tie it in somewhere here. Boop. There, it's hooked up. We've got more power. More power. So that just added 500 to us. Um, now, we're already fluctuating because of some fluids with our oil refineries because I've kind of over... I overdid everything in the fuel refineries to make sure that we never did starve out our plastic and rubber production. So we'll see them kind of click on and off a little bit. But now it's time to go find some more. And then, of course, we'll get more fluctuations with the geysers and the thermal generators because they do not do a consistent power uh, output. So let's go find our next ones now. If we look at the map here, um, they're kind of located right around this area here. And it does look like there's about two of them there. So we're going to go head off that way now. All right, here we are close to, remember in our uh, Update 5 series starter factory, we're close to where that was. And we have two more thermal generator or two more uh, nodes here that we can tie into. So we will just grab our thermal generator. We'll throw it on there and throw one on there. I'm not really worried about placement on these. Um, we will... Grab a power pole. We'll just slap it here. And here. How much are we getting out of these two? So this is between a 1 and 300 megawatts. This one is generating between 2 and 600 megawatts. So we've got a normal node and a pure node here that we are dealing with for these. Now, this is just basically free power because that's it. You place the machine... 
it's generating power. So other than the cost of the actual components that went into it, it's nothing for us at this point now. So we could just take this line now and we'll have to do a little bit of maneuvering here to get it over to tie it in with the rest of our factory, which is easy enough to do, of which we have a power slug right here that we're going to grab too. We're just going to click this here and boom, into the, into the pole. We are good to go. That's added some more power to us. And we are just going to grab this power slug. He's a mine. And we'll probably take out this as well as... I'm going to use the carcasses to throw into the awesome sink to be able to generate some more tickets for us because we're still on our goal for getting all of the trophies. And yeah, we need a lot of um, the fix-it coupons for that. So there is thermal generators two and three going. Now, I believe if we continue off this way, there is uh, the next one that we're going to be coming to, which is a normal one. Okay, that should be the ones that we just flagged there. It should tick on the map any second. There we go. That's the one we're heading to. It's about a, th about a kilometer away. So that's where we're heading. All right. So this one here is right close to where we're pulling some sulfur from. And we are just going to grab our geothermal generator. We'll throw it down on top of that. So far, all of these have been nice and close to existing factories here. And we can easily tie it in line to be able to get the power distribution tied in. So boom and boom. There we go. More power, please. What are we up to? 37 gigawatts, 37 and a half gigawatts. So it's slowly climbing. This will be another one that's between one and 300. I would imagine it's going to average more around that 250 mark, somewhere around there. But that is now generating more free power for us. Let's continue on the map. Uh, looks like the next one we're gonna be doing is an unpure node. Where are we at here right now? So it looks like it's kind of in this area. There's like a, a string of them from here, here, like all through this area. There's actually quite a few of them. So um, we're going to head off that way now. All right. So we are at our impure node here. I imagine this is not going to generate a whole lot of power for us. But we are going to place this down and we'll see between 50 and 150 megawatts this one generates. And we're actually close to a coal node here, or sorry, a copper node. So I'm just going to grab some power from this. We can't quite reach that. So we'll throw one here and boom, it is in line. Did it just say we broke a fuse? I could have swore it said we broke a fuse, but everything seems to be okay now. So I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah, we're fluctuating. There's lots of fluctuations now as we're adding in these thermal generators. This line's really getting wavy. So what are we getting up to? We're getting up to 38 gigawatts and down to 35.7. So really fluctuating in their power generation, but that's okay because it's just free power we're adding. Next node. All right, we found our next one and we're actually still fairly close to our coal power now. We're just, or our um, copper line. So we're just going to throw down another geothermal generator. We'll run some copper wire and cabling and all that up here. And then take it from here. Try to see where, there's our line over there. So we just got to slowly make our way over to here. And click that in, boom. More power. Okay, so now I think we're, we're starting to get a little bit off of where our, our main factories are now. Um, as we continue, oh, look, another power slug. Yes, please. Thank you. We're going to need a lot of these because we're going to need like 
hundreds of water extractors for our planned factory upgrades. So all of which are overclocked to 250% to make 300 cubic meters of water per minute. So all the power slugs we could find, we're grabbing them. All right, from here, we need to look at our map. And um, this these next ones here look to be right around this area is where we're heading. So let us go check that out. All right, we're at the next one. Let's throw down another geothermal generator. Now we're starting to get a little tricky with our, our power lines because we got to run our power lines back. That is for some future stuff that I'm going to be showing you here. That is all a transport tube that I've got set up for all of the uranium. Um, it goes to all of our different uranium sites. However, those are not powered yet. So I don't really have any means to um, tie those in yet. So they're kind of there for looks right now. Uh, but now I'm going to go work at getting some power to this. All right, if we look at our map, we are at our next two nodes, which is located right in this little cluster. It does look like they're both to be normal nodes. So we're just going to throw down some geothermal generators on those two. And we'll connect the power up to those. And now we got to get ourselves out of here with this power and make it back to be able to plug it in somewhere. And that that might be a little bit of a challenge. So um, I'll make this power line go back. All right. So the next ones we got to do kind of look like they're up in this little watery spot just to the north of us here. So that's where we're heading next. Well, it's not much of a watery spot, but at least it is something that's here. So we're going to throw down a geothermal generator here, geothermal generator here. I think that's it. Just cruising around this little pool here now. I do not see any more of those little geysers. So we'll just hook up the power to these together. And then figure out a path to be able to get that back to connect it in line. All right, the next location looks like it's just in this little swamp location right about here, which will be near one of our plutonium uh, veins that we are... Uh, sorry, not plutonium, the uranium nodes that we're getting um, our fuel from. So that um, will be able to give us a tie-in to be able to get the power into that overhead structure. So we're going to go ahead that way now. All right, here we are in our swamplands here. Going to throw down another one of these generators here and another one here. And I believe those are the only two nodes that we've got. So now it's a matter of tying some power to those. And then we can connect them in line with everything else. Okay, so from here, if we look at our map, we head off to some undiscovered country, which is about in this area here. It looks like there's three more nodes over there. It looks like a pure and two more normals. So we're gonna go ahead over to that area. Okay, so I found the first one here. We'll go to power, place down this. Now there should be some more here. As well, we might, oh, right, right here, right beside this one. And I wanna say there's one more here. Maybe if I sit like right in the middle of these two and I hit B. Ding, 87 right here. Right here is this one. Boom, okay, so we've got those three now that we can tie back. So let us put down a node here, power connector there, power pole here, and connect this one out of range. Of course it is. Okay, so then we can take this three now and go, can we see our other ones from here? Yeah, and tie it over to those ones to bring that power back. I did run and tie power into this pole. So now power is starting to get built into our structure there. That's gonna look after our uranium in future episodes, but that uh, we're getting there. Things are, things are plugging along in our prep here. All right, those three over there have now been tied in. I don't know if I can see them from here. 
Oh, you could just barely see it off if we go and um, zoom in here. Scrolling with the mouse wheel. You could just see them kind of tucked off into the trees there. So um, if we go now and we look at our map, the last ones are kind of right in this area here. And it looks like it's two pure nodes that we're going to be heading off to. So that is our destination. All right, we have reached our final destination. And uh, if we look at our map here, they're located just right here. And um, I don't know if I can move the map at all. Can I zoom out? No, that's, it's, it's quite a ways. Like we haven't done, like this here is where some of our other nodes are. We haven't done a lot of exploring down this way at all. Um, so like there's, this is all undiscovered country for us. We haven't done anything out here. That's as far over as we've come is that plutonium or uranium ore that's going up that way and uranium ore that's going up that way there. So we'll throw some thermal generators on here. This one, and there's one more node here, right there, perfect. Okay, we'll power these up and then feed the power back into uh, one of our lines over there somewhere. And now that we've tied in all of those geysers with the geothermal generators, we've increased our power production by about five gigawatts worth of power. So we're fluctuating between just below 40,000 and just over 40,000 um, megawatts of power. So if we go and look at this here, uh, what did we peak out at? 41.7 there, but then it goes down to as low as 39.7. So there's about one gigawatt worth of fluctuation um, that we're having with our power generation. And that's going to be because of our fuel production and then just how much fluctuation is in those geothermal generators. So... They do say that it averages out to about with if you get all of the geothermal generators, it's about four and a half gigawatts is what it averages at. It's going to peak higher than that and it's going to, you know, dip lower than that. But generally, it should average out to about four and a half gigawatts of power. All right. Now we need to work at building some storage for all of this power that we're generating uh, because it's not going to be near enough as to what we need. And as we do some building and stuff, we've got about 17 gigawatts worth of power here. Actually, no, over what we're actively using, we got about 30, 25 gigawatts of power that we could be dumping into power storage. So that's what we're going to work on now is finding the ideal location for a bunch of power storage cells. Okay, so for setting up our power cell storage or our power storage for our current power generation that we've got going on here. We are way down here at the far south end of the map. And I thought maybe uh, maybe we could build it like below the world. But once you get down below this certain, I've started building a platform down here. Once you get below this area, you're, you can't get under the actual island. Because if I go down, how much more is it here? Right there, we start taking damage. So we can't actually get under the island to be able to store it. So I'm just, I'm building it out here in the void fog. It's out of the way, it won't be seen. But out here is where we're gonna have this power storage all set up. So, all right, so I have laid out 60 of these power storage units. And actually, if you really look at it from a distance, they kind of look like Duracell batteries. That's what they've totally ripped their copper top batteries that are basically here. So every 10 of these is one gigawatt worth of storage. So we've got six gigawatts worth of power storage available here. And if we look at this right now, then this is the individual unit right here. It says it's going to be 57 minutes until it's fully charged and um, it will hold 100 megawatts. But if we look over on this side, it's the whole power storage area and so currently right now our stored charge is 270 megawatts and uh, of the 6,000 megawatts that it can do so six gigawatts worth of storage so we're going to add a whole lot more of these batteries I just ran out of materials on these um, so they'll actually be 11 deep by the time I'm done because basically I've got them all tied together in series here so they runs down and it loops through each one of these you can only connect two cables to each one of these batteries. So we'll swing back up this way with another row 
And then we'll start another row of like, we'll do six at a time going across. So, um, yeah, like it's, it's just going to be a, a great little st source here. And we can go out, like this is how far out we can go before we hit the world border. So, I mean, if I fill this all up with batteries out here, we'll have a fair amount of stored power that as I start taking things apart and putting it back together again, uh, the base will still be able to function. And I mean, as you can see, we're way out in the void here. Our view distance has completely disappeared in the fog. You can't see those batteries anywhere, but we'll come back once we have this all filled up with batteries. All right, so currently I've got about 56 gigawatts worth of power storage set up here. I'm going to continue expanding this as we move along, but uh, now it's time to give you guys a little bit of a tour of kind of some of the buildings or some of the structures that I've got built up so far. So let's head over to um, our uranium extraction tubes that we've got. All right, so here we are at one of the uranium nodes that's currently got a spitter, skinner, spider thing stuck in the middle of it. But uh, yeah, the uranium, it's coming out on conveyor systems here. And then I'm just going to uh, blast out a section of this wall here so that we can cruise on in and have a look. So we have uh, Mark V miner or Mark V conveyor belts all coming up. And then, of course, if you want to have them all in a one long conveyor, you can put conveyor holes in the certain sections so that you can continue um, without having to have all the support and stuff, like having a, a section of floor here. You just you put the floor in or the foundation in, you put down the conveyor hole and then remove the foundation. And then you get a nice, long, continuous conveyor elevator that's taking everything all up. So uh, as we cruise up to the top here, this is the two that basically the tunnel systems that I have here now that are going to be transporting all of our uranium back to where we're going to be doing the nuclear power plant. And um, these were all done with, uh, I did use a blueprint for these. So uh, each blueprint was basically a, a section here with the windows in the middle and then uh, it divided up here. So it'd be a chunk of four basically four foundations worth of construction here with all the lighting and um, the only thing it didn't have the cabling in, I did have the uh, the little uh, power pole mounts on the ceiling, uh, but not the cables. I came through and I attached the cables later and I don't have all the cables in yet either because there's, I, I mean, I haven't finished doing all the conveyors and stuff and whatnot. So, but as we cruise on through here, and uh, make our way towards the end, then I'll show you kind of where we're going to do that nuclear power plant, which you kind of saw in an earlier episode where it's going to be kind of laid out at. But so this was all stuff in that I've been doing here for pre prepping and getting everything ready. And uh, let's just continue along this tunnel uh, to get to our nuclear power plant. So as you can tell from that time lapse, that was a massive amount of materials to be able to build this tunnel structure um, of which we still got some more powering and stuff that we got to do here. But then you can see basically it will be two full conveyors of 780 items per minute, um, which would be a total of what, 1560. So that would leave about 540. 40 on the top conveyor and we will end up kind of merging all these where they need to be merged at some point um, to get everything balanced out so it's 780 780 and 540 on those so and then everything's going to shoot down this way i don't have uh, all of the wall structure done here yet but we have the three elevators they drop all the way down basically to the ocean bed here and this is strictly just to manage our water input from where we're going to have our 
nuclear reactors and of course out in this area is where all the nuclear reactors and water extractors are going to be set up and I believe if I calculated it correctly it's 67 nuclear power plants at 250% and one at 100% to be able to consume all of the uranium that's going to be coming out of here so all right guys so that of course that's end game that's our ultimate goal we're a long ways away from that i hope you've enjoyed this episode next episode we're going to be start processing some of the other raw materials as support for this power plant so reach down right now if you could and hit that like button on the video subscribe if you are new to the channel that would be greatly appreciated leave a comment uh, let me know what you think of our end game plans here of a 500 gigawatt nuclear power plant and um yeah reach out uh, you can follow me on instagram and on twitter and that's at terrace dwdc with that all said you guys have a good one and we will see you in the next episode